welcome back children to this part of the video it is the it is the last video of the topic uh, the, the enemy or the chapter of the enemy and here i will wind up this chapter the children i told you uh, that when the doctor sudao returned from the palace of the general he was a little bit anxious about the american soldier because he had promised or actually the general had promised sadao that he will send assassins to kill the american soldier but when he came back and he saw the american soldier moving and when he also saw that he is complaining about some pain in the muscles forgetting everything else he started checking the wound now let's continue massage may do it he said if exercise does not it won't bother him much the young man said his young face was gaunt under the stubbly blond beard say doctor i have got something i want to say to you if i hadn't met a jap like you well i wouldn't be alive today i know that sadao so bowed but he could not speak sure i know that tom went on warmly his big thin hands gripping a chair were white at the knuckles i guess if all the japs were like you there wouldn't have been a war perhaps sadao said with great difficulty and now i think you had better go to bed so you know children kindness pays as sadao was kind american soldier also understood his kindness and he said doctor if every japanese would be like you there would be no war but sadao did not say anything he said you go to bed he helped the boy back into the bed and then bowed good night he said sadao slept badly that night time and time again he woke thinking he heard the rustling of footsteps the sound of a twig broken or a stone displaced in the garden a noise such as men might make who carried a burden The next morning he made the excuse to go first into the guest room if the Americans were gone then he then could simply tell Hannah that so the general had directed but when he opened the door he saw at once that there on the pillow was a shaggy blond head he could hear the peaceful breathing of the sleep and he closed the door again quietly children if you remember the general promised to send the assassins that night so after talking to the american soldier sadao went to his room but he could not sleep every 5 for 10 minutes he was waking up to hear the footsteps of those assassins but next morning when he was there he saw the american soldier lying there only he is asleep he told hena he is almost well to sleep like that what shall we do with him hena whispered her old refrain so that was okay said i must decide in a day or two he promised but certainly he thought the second night must be the night there was a wind that night and he listened to the sounds of bending boughs and whistling partitions hena woke too ought we not to go and close the stick man's partition he asked no so that was said he is able to do it for himself so that was quite relieved that soldier is alive but when hena asked why are you not closing the door that the partition so sadao said no no he will do himself but actually he had opened the door for the assassins so that they can kill the soldier hena woke up ought we not to go and close the stick man's partition he asked no sadao said he is able now to do it for himself but the next morning the american was still there Then the third night of court must be the night the wind changed to quiet rain and the garden was full of the sound of dripping eaves and running springs sadao slept a little better but he woke at the sound of a crash and leaped to his feet so children three four nights passed soldier was not killed by the assassins but still sadao was sleepless what was that hana cried the baby woke at her voice and began to wail i must go and see but he held her and would not leave her move 
Sadao, she cried, what is the matter with you? Don't go, he muttered, don't go. His terror infected her and she stood breathless, waiting. There was only silence. Together they crept back into the bed, the baby between them. Yet when he opened the door of the guest room in the morning, there he was a young man. He was very gay and had already washed and was now on his feet. He had asked for a razor yesterday and had shaved himself and today there was a faint color in his cheeks. So children, days by days were passing by. But American soldier was still there and he was healthy, fit and fine. And one day back he had shaved. So there was a little reddishness on his cheek. I am well, he said joyously. So Dao drew his kimono round his weary body. He could not, he decided suddenly, go through another night. It was not that he cared for this young man's life. No, simply, it was not worth the strain. You are well. So Dao agreed. He lowered his voice. You are so well that I think if I put my boat on the shore tonight with food and extra clothing in it, you might be able to row to that little island not far from the coast. It is so near the coast that it has not been worth fortifying. Nobody lives on it because in a storm it is submerged. But this is not the season of storm. You could live there until you saw a Korean fishing boat pass by. They pass quite near the island because the water is many fathoms deep there. The young man stared at them, slowly comprehending. Do I have to? He asked. So now, Sadao, after observing for six, seven nights that nothing happened, he thought of another plan. That is, the plan of escape for the American. He told the American that I will provide you with a boat and you can reach an island which is not very far away from here. Sometimes it is stormy, the sea is stormy, but it is as it is not a season of storm, so you can easily reach that island. There you will find a Korean fishing boat and uh, that fishing boat pass very quite near the island because the water is very deep, just next to the island. So the young man stared at them and said, do I have to? He asked. I think so, Sadao said gently. You understand, it is not hidden that you are here. The doctor said to us, Tom was not ready to leave Sadao. But Sadao said, You know that everybody knows of your presence in my house. So you have to go. The young man nodded in perfect comprehension. Okay, he said simply. Sadao did not see him again until evening. As soon as it was dark, he dragged the stout boat down to the shore and in it he put food and bottled water that he had bought secretly during the day as well as two quilts he had bought at a pawn shop. The boat he tied to a post in the water for the tide was high, there was no moon and he walked without a flashlight. When he came to the house he entered as though he were just back from his work and so Hannah knew nothing. Yumi was here today, she said as he served her supper. Though she was so modern, still she did not eat with him. Yumi cried over the baby. She went on with a sigh. She misses him so. The children Sadao had arranged a boat, food, water bottle secretly and quilts also for that American soldier. And the boat he tied next to the shore because their house was near the seashore. And he brought the flashlight also. When he came home, he, Hannah informed that Yumi is here today. She said as she had served supper, though she was modern, still she did not eat with him. Yumi cried over the baby. The servants will come back as soon as the foreigner is gone. So Dao said. He went to the guest room that night before he went to bed himself and checked carefully the American's temperature. The state of the wound and his heart and pulse. The pulse was irregular, but that was perhaps because of excitement. The young man's pale lips, lips were pressed together and his eyes burned. Only the scars on his neck were red. I realize you are saving my life again, he told Sadao. Not at all, Sadao said. It is only convenient, inconvenient to have you here any longer. So Sadao checked the American soldier. 
about his pulse about his wound about his temperature the pulse was irregular because sadao uh noticed that there was excitement inside the american the american soldier said the american soldier said the i think you are saving my life again so sadao said no i'm not saving your life but it is very un- inconvenient to have you here longer he had hesitated a good deal about giving the man a flashlight but he had decided to give it to him after all it was a small one his own which he had used at night when he called if your food runs out before you catch a boat he said signal me two flashes at the same time the sun drops over the horizon do not signal in darkness for it will be seen if you are all right but still here signal me once you will find fresh fish easy to catch but it must eat them raw a fire would be seen now so thou guided the soldier that if you are food finishes just signal two flashes of the torch but before sunset because in the darkness you will be seen and then you can also catch the fish but don't cook the fish by lighting a fire because you would be seen okay the young man breathed he was dressed now in the japanese clothes which sarao had given him and the last moments thou wrapped a black cloth about his blond head now sadao said the young american without a word shook sadao's hand warmly and then walked quite well across the floor and down the step in the darkness of the garden once twice sadao saw his light flash to find his way but that would not be suspected he waited until from the shore there was one more flash then he closed the partition that night he slept then sadao prepared the soldier in japanese dress he covered his head with black cloth and then the american soldier hired the boat and moved away from there then he gave the flash and at last when he gave last flash when he reached the island sadao felt relaxed and then he slept you say the man escaped the general said asked faintly he had been operated upon a week before an emergency operation to which thou had been called in the night for 12 hours so thou had not been sure the general would live the gall bladder was much involved when the old man had begun to breathe deeply again and to demand food so thou had not been able to ask about the assassins so far as he invited they had never come the servants had returned and the yumi had cleaned the guest room thoroughly and had burned sulfur in it to get the white man's smell out of it nobody said anything only the gardener was cross because he had got behind with his chrysanthemums so after the escape of the enemy soldier the general when faced with sadao he was shocked okay the man escaped yeah and but general did not say anything because he was more worried about his illness he was more about about his gall bladder then sadao did not ask about the assassins because he knew that they had never come so all the servants had returned to sadao's house yumi had cleaned the room thoroughly so as to wipe away the smell of white men only the gardener was little bit curious but after a week sadao felt the general was well enough to be spoken to about the prisoner yes excellency he escaped sadao now said he coughed signifying get had he had not said all he might have said but was unwilling to disturb the general further but the old man opened his eyes suddenly that prisoner he said with some energy did i not promise that uh, you i would kill him for you means general actually had forgotten to send the assassins you did excellency said so general asked thou did not i ask you to send assassins so sadao so said yes you asked well well the old man said in a tone of amazement so i did but you see i am suffering a good deal the truth is i thought of nothing but myself in short i forgot my promise to you so it means the general forgot to send the assassins i wondered your excellency sadao murmured it was 
certainly very careless of me the general said but you understand it was not lack of patriotism or dereliction of duty he looked anxiously at his doctor if the matter should come out you would understand that you won't certainly your excellency so said he suddenly comprehended the general was in the palm of his hand and that as a consequence he himself was perfectly safe i can swear you to your loyalty excellency he said to the old general and to your zeal against the enemy now general said okay i forgot to send the assassins and now he was afraid himself it means general was afraid himself that he didn't do his duty properly now sadawa knew that general was in his hand but he said okay your excellency i will not speak anything about it you are a good man the general murmured and closed his eyes you will be rewarded but sadawa searching the spot of black in the toilet at sea that night had had his reward there was no prick of light in the dusk no one was on the island his prisoner was gone safe doubtless for he had warned him to wait only for a korean fishing boat he stood for a moment on the veranda gazing out to the sea from whence the young man had come that other night and into his mind although without reason there came other white faces he had known the professor at the whose house he had met hana a dull man and his wife had been a silly talkative woman in spite of her wish to be kind he remembered his old teacher of anatomy who had been so insistent on mercy with the knife and then he remembered the face of his fat and slatternly landlady he had had great difficulty in finding a place to live in america because he was japanese the americans were full of prejudice and it had been bitter to live in it knowing himself their superior how he had despised the ignorant and dirty old woman who had at last consented to house him in her miserable home she had once tried to be grateful to her because she had in his last year nursed him though through influenza but it was difficult for she was no less repulsive to him in her kindness now he remembered that the youthful haggard face of his prisoner white and repulsive strange he thought i wonder why i could not kill him so now after returning from the general's house when he noticed there is no flash of light from the island and he understood that a soldier has left in the korean boat it means now he is safe so he has got his reward and he started thinking about his stay in america about his anatomy professor about the landlady who was so repulsive who means who was so who was so angry but once she helped him while he was suffering from influenza means while dr sada was suffering from influenza the landlady helped him although she was very angry now sada remembered the face of the white man and repulsive face it means the kindness pays any time it may take time but it will come back to you children sada was helped by the landlady and the american soldier was helped by sadao it means kindness moved from one person to the other it was the kindness of the american professor american landlady and other people in america who helped sadao that created a place in the heart of dr sadao about americans and that's why he helped the american soldier So, children, this chapter teaches us that we must be kind, even to our enemy, and maybe that enemy could turn out to be our best friend, best caretaker. So, children, I hope you well understood this chapter and the theme of this chapter. So, that's all in this chapter. Hope you understand. Thank you.